Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exclusive interview. We have another special guest with us. We have Steve Laws. Uh, you guys in the comment section have been mentioning Steve's name so many times recently, saying bring back Steve on the channel. We do have Steve now. Uh, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, thanks for having me on again, mate. I'm good. Well, you and yourself? Yeah, good, good. Um, we've had you on the show before in happier times a little bit, uh, but it uh, seems like uh, things are not going too well for our nation and our culture, um, not just in terms of the number of illegal migrants going up, mass migration is going up. There seems to be a bit of a complacency part of the establishment and complicity with the rest of them. People like J Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor, who said we should just bring more people in. But uh, what I want to talk to you about is obviously your activities recently, but also what's going on with uh, these tensions we have uh, crime going up but seems to be again politically incorrect to say but uh, it's pro predominantly focused on uh, people who are not originally from here uh, or um, their background basically is a different completely different culture that's not compatible we've seen a video recently uh, from even france that the migrants tried to kidnap a girl a french girl with their mother and um, what is going on in the west are we going down well, this is the problem with mass migration coming in and flooding the countries all through Europe. We're going to have these problems. We've been warning about them for years. And unfortunately, we've been proven right, which is something we didn't want to happen. But we all knew it was going to happen. And this is just the start, unfortunately, with the sort of people that are coming over. There's, we have no idea who they are. We've, we don't know what their intentions are. They just come into the country and then a, a small minority of them do commit some serious crimes. And it's not worth any person's life justifying it in my opinion to keep bringing these people over for the risk of somebody's life because it seems like they're collateral damage to political policy at the moment that's how it feels yeah and 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 it's fascinating how the government we had the prime minister a couple of weeks ago coming out to claim victory the numbers went down compared to last year because of the weather and then we, we even had yesterday i reported that uh, the national crime agency celebrated that they arrested the uh, the gang leaders for this people smuggler. I said, fair enough, but it was a small gang uh, that only were responsible for bringing 45 illegal migrants. It seems like they're, they're trying to basically just win the PR battle every now and then to say, wait, we're doing something. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have all these issues where uh, you yourself, uh, as, as an independent reporter, have been going around and not just reporting on the numbers of people coming in uh, from Do Do in Dover, but also these and let's just say it started as one-off cases and incidents where you know, a migrant does this or uh, some cr a foreign criminal uh, does this but now it's becoming more regular or are, are we just exaggerating it or or is it actually going up because it seems to be going up yeah the crime rates are climbing and with the numbers climbing it's 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 obvious what's happening you put two and two together it's clear to see for instance rishi sunak was taking um credit for the weather we all knew it was the weather that was stopping the crossings happening. It happens every year and every year a different politician gets rolled out in front of the media, gives a little speech and claims credit for the weather and says, oh, we've got the crossings down. But in the last eight days, 1,660 have arrived just by a dinghy. That's 33 dinghies that they've arrived in. And that's just in the last eight days. There won't be any crossings today due to the thunderstorms. Mm. However, the crossings could continue tomorrow. And we're looking on track to beat last year's numbers which were around 45 and a half thousand predicted to be around 65,000 this year and with no deterrent in place it's only going to get worse this isn't even the busy season and we're already having three four hundred arrive a day so the time summer and September comes it's going to be over a thousand a day and it's going to be out of control I think uh, one of the biggest problems is um, we know that again I, you can't say it on the mainstream media but uh, certain cultures especially the the first generation especially if they are coming here without embracing our values are not compatible with our culture and certain and it, there's a problem with certain cultures there's a problem with class there's a problem with uh, the legitimacy of um, individuals but it seems like one of the biggest problems is um, whether they are legal or illegal because before you might have made an argument a few years ago that you know okay legal migrants as long as they control the mic um, numbers it seems to be okay they they integrate that was the theory uh, and with the problem is mostly illegal migrants. But now with mass legal migration, you now have a situation where, and it's not to do with skin color because you have actually white people from parts of Europe coming in who are also not compatible. They are legal migrants. But I think because it's so easy to come here, everybody's welcome to come here. 
there's no urgency for these people to at least try to integrate or try to realize, okay, can I actually live in Britain and act like the rest of the, the nation? Um, and, and, and it seems like everyone just wants to come here and take advantage of uh, the generosity of the country. Well, this is the thing. It was 1.2 million visas handed out last year. That doesn't mean 1.2 million people. That could be more than that because one visa could be for a family. So the numbers are really, really high. And as you say, it doesn't matter whether it's illegal or legal. The people are coming from the same countries, the same cultures, the same style of life. They're doing the same. They live in the same when they come over. Many go into the black economy, whether they're coming over legally or illegally. None of that's a benefit to the country whatsoever. And then you add in this crime statistics, the risk that you put into children and women, etc. And it's just not worth the risk. And the numbers, even if you have got a, even if you're neutral on immigration, you can't argue with the fact that the numbers coming over are unsustainable. The reason you can't see a doctor is because there's 1.2 million people coming over a year. The reason you can't get a university place for your child is because there's so many people coming over. And there's various different types of visas that people come over on that, um, that get manipulated. For instance, the student visas, they can bring their families over. And then once they've been here and have been settled for three years, they can argue the case that they're settled in the country and then they can stay. And it, the process sort of continues. The same with illegal immigration. Most people always focus on the dinghies because it's right in your face. But when I went to northern France recently, every illegal I spoke to in the camps, they was all saying that they're going to try the lorries. They're all going to try the lorries. And the, um, asylum applications only equate for 45 percent of dinghy crossings. So it tells you 55 percent of illegals are entering via other routes, such as the Eurotunnel lorries and overstaying their visa. So at every single direction, whether it's legal or illegal, it's just out of control. You're the right Tories that, have lost control of our borders. You're right that it's just uh, not worth the risk, even when it comes to mass legal migration. But I think my view is there's a vested interest in different areas. So when it comes to universities, universities are pushing for foreign students because they bring the money for them. You know, they pay. Uh, and then you've got corporations and businesses who would say, OK, we cheaper, cheap labor to just get uh, from somewhere else. Same applies to even hospitals mm -hmm. who would say, OK, the difference between us training up a, a British citizen to make them a nurse or a doctor or get an already trained foreign doctor and, and it will be cheaper. So, and this is the whole problem. The system has been rigged intentionally or intentionally against the interest of uh, people from here. And um, it's not necessarily one group of people in government deciding for all these areas. And I think that it's, it's all these different departments and the different divisions that part of society that have their own vested interests. And it seems like, and some of them are just complacent. Some some of our political leaders are basically can't control it. They've lost control, as you said. Some, like Jeremy Hunt, seem to be, if not necessarily advocating for it, they'd be like, I don't think this is a problem. I, don't, I think we should just be okay with it because they think it's short-term boost for GDP. Short-term boost for GDP is nonsense uh, because you, know, you, you have the medium-term and long-term consequences, not just in terms of the culture and safety of society, but even economically, as you said. Um, is there any political will do you think that's going to be created we know there's a lot of people now it's not just us complaining but it seems like there's still a bit of a taboo in society and the media to talk about this is it are we going to have any political revolution whether it's by a political party or the tories becoming conservative do we have any hope do you think the only way we're going to build past that bridge of people being afraid of speaking at it publicly on the mainstream is when people aren't afraid of being called racist anymore they're not afraid of being called a bigot or far right and so on you have to just <laughs> You just all I do is embrace it. I get called it left, right, and centre for what I do all day long. I just embrace it. If, they, if someone calls me racist, I just go yes. Because once you <laughs> once you own that, they they can't argue against it. They've got no other weapon to use against you. And once people get past that that scenario, we yeah. can start having honest conversations. But at the moment, people are always sort of having the conversation, but they've got sort of one arm behind their back and they're not willing to go the full way on the conversation. And it's, it's disappointing and frustrating because. When you campaign against it so often, you want the people who have the, the uh, position to do so to actually speak about it honestly. But as you know, it's always watered down and presented on like a pro-open border stance rather than a negative stance. You're, you're right about owning it, uh, even even when it comes to humour as well. Uh, you know, if they're going to call you, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do mine because I keep getting called uh, the Brown Enoch Powell. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know how I can own that one. <laughs> I don't think I can pull off an Enoch Powell. But uh, I mean, that, that's a good point as well. We're not to exaggerate where what uh, people like him mentioned. Back start today. saying Maya was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, not not again, not to uh, go completely crazy on what what was mentioned in the 60s, 70s, and 80s by people like Powell and others. 
it seems like it's coming true. And people interpreted differently, obviously, at the time. They were like, well, is he, is he advocating for some sort of 1930s Italy or Germany to fight back? Or is he just basically saying everybody coming here immediately are going to be like enemies? But I think the point of what that speech was, or things that there used to be mentioned, people like Powell, was that if you, if you just allow it to happen gradually, you're going to create a society that's going to be divisive anyway. And then both sides will have the, the backlash. So you're going to have that guy in a... in France who tried to kidnap a girl uh, yesterday that video came out and then you're also going to have the, the the indigenous people and the citizens of the country also fighting back and it's going to cause chaos and that's the ripple of the blood and the, the whole uh, metaphor and everything else I mentioned do you, um, what do you think of that well this is where we're heading unfortunately the tensions are rising you can see how much they've raised in the last three years so give it another three years and this 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 um This issue is going to be huge. It's already the the biggest issue, uh, along with cost of living. This is yeah. the, the main talking point of the country. Everyone can see it happening in front of them. For instance, you walk down the road and you see a hotel filled with illegal immigrants and you know that you're paying for that whilst you're going to work and they're sitting in a hotel. Whether you're anti-immigration or not, that will annoy you at the best of times. So you can see how tensions will rise. And obviously, the more they ignore the right wing talking points, the, the, the stronger they're going to become. It is. It is idiots. Yeah, because I was actually on LBC last night. I don't know why. I was. I was on a panel. Any questions and a, a cross question. And the, 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 of course, the rest of the panel were left wing and liberal. And these sort of topics would come up, and they immediately shut you down. Not necessarily in an aggressive way, but the way they present their arguments is so emotional, so compassionate that uh, even if you just raise concerns about a a, a local um, a hotel being filled, uh, and then somehow there will be a couple of them. And coincidentally, that will uh, cause, uh, you know, commit crime or whatever. They, they will just still defend it saying, well, no, no, you have to be compassionate about the, the other ones who are in the hotel. But we're not being, it's not any, as they would say in the past, racialist issue. It's, it's, a, it's primarily the fact that you don't, you, the, the people who are defending the migrants, they don't even know who they are. They're just completely utilizing the opportunity because it's virtual signaling for them. It's, 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 it's all basically self-promotion. Because otherwise, it's, it's a classic what I would call Western white self-guilt. That, you know, they, they, they think they're so privileged. And we are privileged. We, we, are, we should be proud of uh, the, the countries that have been, you know, been built, built here by your ancestors and everybody here compared to the other continents in the world. But don't feel shame. Don't, don't be ashamed of uh, what's been created here. And I think this is the next battle. Um, right now, in, t in 2020, it was people like you. And Nigel Farage, who went uh, to Dover and reported on the boats. And uh, recently, I think we're finally getting the mainstream media and the, the narrative of the establishment by force to talk about mass migration. I think the next thing is uh, political willpower. And what, so what, what are you up to now? Uh, what, are you, do you have any other plans, uh, politically speaking? Um, at the moment, I'm sort of sat on the fence with the uh, politi what direction politically at the moment, because I want to kind of see... how it all plays out because there's a lot of turmoil going on at the moment. Everyone's sort of all over the place. So when it sort of calms down, I want to see what direction and if anyone's got a serious plan. As yeah. it stands, reform seem the more viable, but um, we'll see how that plays out as closer to a general election. But I generally do think it, the, the problem is only going to get worse. And I, I've been banging about it for years, as you know, and I've seen it escalate from just a few thousand coming over to tens of thousands to it won't be long before it's hundreds of thousands. And obviously this is just the illegal side of things. We've had yeah. to force the immigration traffic to the mainstream by dragging it along by a scruff of its feet, basically. But we got there through kicking and screaming. And But now we need to force, we need to find somebody within the establishment who's willing to take our message, bring it into the House of Commons, drum it down consistently every day and make, force the rest of these politicians to come our way because the majority of them only care about their seat at the end of the day they just want to get paid so if you they will they will go with whatever political decision seems popular at the time the vast majority of them apart from the ones that are dead set against it so you can bring them over to our side you just have to kind of force them as how we do that though is a different different talking point no i mean it is it's absolutely i mean you make good points about the whole their political situation and they're, they're, The right-wing parties, they're still all over the place. Uh, I think uh, 
the best thing to do is for, for me and you to start a new party, call it the Laws Party, because uh, <laughs> Laws obviously is a perfect, perfect name for it. Uh, but uh, thank you again, Steve, uh, for uh, coming on the show. Hopefully, we'll have some happy updates uh, the next time you're on the channel. Any last few words? Yeah, no worries, but um, thanks for having me on. Um, can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Have a good day. Have a good day.